Former Minister of Aviation Femi Fani Kayode says Nigerians should be licensed to carry arms as Mieti Ala backed the Bauchi state governor on herders bearing arms for protection. And former Deputy National Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Bode George, charges President Buhari to provide leadership and unite Nigerians. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anakon. Femi Fani Kayode has said the best strategy to tackle the insecurity facing the nation was for the government to rise up to its responsibility and to defend the people of with the Mieti Allah defending the Bauchi state governor, Senator Bala Muhammad, over his comments that herders possess AK-47 rifles for self-defense. Now, the former minister said this uh, since the Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Magaji, retired, also urged Nigerians to defend themselves against kidnappers and killers. They should be allowed to carry sophisticated weapons to defend themselves effectively. Well, discussing this with me today is former Air Vice Marshal Femi Badebo and uh, public affairs analyst Martins Lomba. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. OK, I I'm going to start with you, um, ABM. Uh, this comment in um, reply of, uh, you know, the um, Plateau State Governor, of course, the Bochi State Governor was replying um, Governor Otam when he addressed the media as to how serious the herders versus farmers situation is. Uh, this response has gotten all kinds of condemnations, criticism. In fact, it has been welcomed by the Mieti Allah, um, uh, you know, supporting them for carrying weapons. Um, but the, where do you stand on this situation of arms carrying? I mean, I know that there is a law against um, small arms and ammunition in Nigeria, especially if you do not have a license. Oh, yes, and, these, they, and the reasons are quite clear. Uh, in a country where people are used to carrying arms, you have to make sure that the, those with arms are licensed and uh, they are adequately trained on how to secure these arms and even store them. Uh, because the problem with just letting everybody have arms is that uh, if you leave them carelessly in your home, children and those who are not used to, who are not trained on the use of them can abuse them we saw a situation in uh, is it Eket in Aquibom, Aquibom, San Francisco, yes. when a young lady um, went to pick up you know it was home mail pistol a rifle or pistol to go and kill a teacher who asked her to cut her hair off and then we've seen lots of other cases like that and there are many people who will tell you about uh, accidental discharges that have happened in homes when you have arms um, the fact that the Mirati Ali are carrying arms is wrong. What I will suggest is that um, communities be em em empowered to arm their vigilantes. In a lot of places in this country where we say we have vigilantes, when you see these people, they are carrying den guns and some form of rudimentary arms and uh, to protect themselves, which from what we are seeing, Mayashi Allah or even the headsmen and Boko Haram carrying, um, you, you can't stand and face them with those kind of arms. Mm. So it has to be matching power for power. And um, it's, it, you know, I know a lot of sentiments uh, are being expressed now. People are charged, people are angry, but we must be very careful as to how we let arms loose in our communities. Let me take you back to, let's just run through some history as to arms and ammunition in Nigeria. Now, in 2016, August of 2016, 500 million guns have illegally found its way into Africa. And 70% of those guns are in Nigeria, just, you know, for statistics purposes. Now, again, in 2010, um, crates of weapons, uh, including rocket launchers and um, motors were seized in Nigeria and reportedly these guns were loaded from Iran. Again, in 2017, the Customs Service intercepted a 20 foot long container loaded with um, 40, 440 arms and ammunition of various sizes and designs. This also came from, this time it came from Turkey. So 
um, the question is, who are importing these guns? Because, I mean, I know it's very expensive to buy one AK-47. It doesn't cost five naira, does it? So who is importing these? Who are, who are the people that are behind this? Because these cases should have been followed through the investigations. We heard at some point they were going to follow it through, ask questions. The last time I heard that guns were intercepted, it was intercepted in South Africa because it was, being, it was headed to Nigeria, but the South Africans flagged it. Then there was another situation where the guns made its way through the ports into the city. It took soldiers at a particular checkpoint to realize that the security personnel that was sitting in front of the vehicle was not a real police officer. And they were carrying another you know, tranche of weapons. So where are these weapons go coming from? I mean, we know where they end up, but where are they coming from? And why are we not doing anything to follow up with the ones that we have you know, um, traced to either Iran or Turkey? I mean, there should be some paper trail, right? Um, it is difficult to deal with things that have been um, import imported by what I'll call powerful people. A lot of arms are imported when they are about to have a political, uh, a round of political selections and so on. And they end up with the voice quote and unquote, that the politicians use to cause mayhem all over the place. You'll notice that we had a lot of problems in Delta, we had a lot of problems in Ondo uh, State prior to this last presidential uh, governorial elections. But once the elections are over, everything just seems to calm down. You no longer have, uh, you know, weapons being bandaged in towns and cities. They now go into uh, the neighborhoods. But apart from that, um, the kind of arms that you just displayed are not what your casual arm robber uh, requires to do his job. Even most of the time when some of these arm robbers are arrested, what they have to sell, what they have with them are usually homemade, homemade pistols and some rudimentary uh, weapons that some of them you will see from their condition that they cannot even fire. Now, what you're seeing with the customs here are brand new pump action rifles. And these ones are some sophisticated weapons that you use in long range firing and in, 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 in combat when you're facing real armed combat. So what happens here is that once you see them confiscated by the customs, the story dies there. We never hear about them again. And they end up with whoever actually brought them in. And it's about pressing buttons. This is one of the problems we have in this country. Hmm. Certain individuals are able to press buttons and have situations like this just disappear. I'd like to remind you that when the uh, former governor of the state, um, you know, did not get his protege to win the election, he had already secured his seat in the Senate. What he did was to suddenly call the commissioner of police and hand over a thousand. Uh, I was about to arms ask. That also is something that has been swept under the carpet, hasn't it? Oh yes, because it was like, um, and I'll tell you, he's not the only one. Most of these governors have their own small bunkers in the governor house where they keep his things. So is it's that legal? Is that he even is legal? Leaving, as he has to hand them out over. But it, but is it legal for? for a governor to store weapons in a government house. He's not a soldier. He's not uh, the captain or a brigadier leading an army or, uh, troop, or troops to war. Why would he be having a stash of ammunition in government house? Because some of them have their own private militia that they arm. And so, for instance, that was a classic case where investigation should have gone to the roots of how he brought these things into the country. But as you see, it's been swept under the, under the carpet. So we continue to have problems. Um, if you look at what Boko Haram or the headsmen, those ones that, that are being caught now, are, 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 are carrying around, these are weapons that um, most of them are brand new. Hmm. They are obviously brought to their location by and there are reports of helicopters and, and, and so on, dropping arms, weapons, and even, uh, you know, uh, foodstuff provision for some of these people. 
Wow. You know? So and where are these helicopters coming from? Where are these things coming from? Big question. And I keep saying that if the Western powers want to help, they can monitor these things and they can locate the origins uh, for us. I'll come back to you because you, you used to work in the Air Force, so you should have more, more answers for us. But let me go to Mr. Mattens Lomba. Um, Mr. Lomba, I would like for you to first and foremost react to um, the saying by FFK that we should also arm ourselves since it's seemingly okay for herders or there's been an ex excuse made on behalf of the herders to arm themselves. Um, but let's just quickly look at the Firearms Act. Um, it states that no person should have in his possession or under his control any firearm of uh, any, any category as stated in um, the Firearms Act uh, specified in part two of this schedule uh, to the act, except in accordance with the license granted in respect thereof or by the inspector general of police, which license for which the license shall be granted or refused uh, in accordance with principles decided upon by the president. So it's not a, an easy thing to acquire arms in Nigeria, yet we find these arms lying around. How well have we done in terms of proliferation of um, small arms and, you know, ammunitions in general, Mr. Lomba? Well, um, if we want to be honest with ourselves, the truth is that everything appears to be upside down. Arms are everywhere. They litter every part of Nigeria. Arm robbers carry arms. Kidnappers also carry. Headsmen carry. Uh, school children also carry, at least from what we heard very recently. So to that extent, you know, we have to do a complete mop-up. I know that from time to time, government used to say that uh, people should surrender their arms and whatnot. But the truth is that, you know, if certain people are given privilege, so to say, to carry arms, then we might as well give everybody arms. And uh, the only reason why I will want to be reluctant to use my ammunition is because I know that you also have. So I want to agree with the position by uh, Femi Fani Kayode that we should all carry arms so that we can respect ourselves. When rain falls, it doesn't fall for tall or short alone or dark or light skinned. It falls for everybody. So you use as you please. If you want to wash your clothes, you may need water. If you want to cook, if you want to take your bath. So if we all have arms, we will respect ourselves. But isn't or that isn't that a call for anarchy? Family. Isn't that a call, call for confusion? No, in, because what we already have you, on our hands is a boiling kettle. Why, why kick it all over to, you know, burn everybody? Why do we have to do that? Isn't that really something we shouldn't be calling no, for? No, the way, the way it is. You know, if we want to pretend about certain realities that we face in today's Nigeria, we might as well pretend. But if we want to be real, if we want to be honest with ourselves, there is obviously a skewed, you know, uh, imbalance in favor of northern Nigeria, so to speak, in favor of headsmen, How so? in favor of those who are privileged. See, we, we must be very confrontational at this point about these issues. If we are not, the whole country is going to go under. And that is the reality. When you say uh, confrontational, how, how do you mean? Just, just because... a no, just a minute. The issues are clear. They are very straightforward. We don't need to be cutting corners. We don't need to be talking from uh, all sides of our mouths or all sides of the street. Come clean and say it exactly as it is. If you say that certain people are uh, terrorists, their organization is a terrorist organization and you ban them. Meanwhile, those people didn't carry arms as at the time you did your ban and what have you. Another set of people who seem to be pampered, they are carrying arms all over the place to the extent that a governor of a state will come out and say yes, defending their position. And then you also find a group coming out plainly and clearly to say that, yes, we are responsible for certain debts. And another governor comes to say that he has actually given money to people that are clearly terrorists. For goodness sake, why are we talking as if these things happened in the dark of night? These things happened openly, clearly. So confrontational means say it face to face with whoever is responsible. 
If it means declaring a state of emergency in certain parts of Nigeria, we'll do so. If it means certain uh, governors should face trial, we should bring them to book because the laws are clear. But in a situation where it looks as if one religion is preferred to another, one group of people are preferred to another. But meanwhile, in economic terms, the southern part of Nigeria is providing all of the money. For goodness sake, what are we saying? We should be confrontational about this. And like I said, in several other places, if we know that we don't want proliferation of arms and what have you, the simple thing to do by Monday morning, tell everybody, return to your state of origin, Nigeria police force. Let's have state police. <laughs> what is the difficulty there? But, but, but that's not how things work. I mean, it's th that, that's not how simple... I mean, that, that is not how just, simple just things work. What we are going but, to see, but, but no, let, just a minute, what we are going to see is that a state like Bayelsa, where I come from, we're probably not going to meet our quota in the state. The number of Bayelsans in the police force are maybe a meager number. But again, what do we want to police in Bayelsa? And I can assure you that most states in northern Nigeria, they will be oversubscribed because they litter the Nigeria police force. We shouldn't be saying these things as if all right, let's move, let's move away from let's move reality. away from that. All right, Mr. Lomba, let's move on to other things. Now I want to go back to Governor Bala Mohammed's um, statement. I'm gonna play that video again of what he said. There's been a retraction of sorts because his aide was trying to say that he was misquoted. But let's listen to that video, listen to what he said, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more. You have seen what our police in the southwest are doing, and some of them from the southeast. Some of us told them with all modesty and humility, you are wrong. But the person that is most wrong is the governor of Benue State, my brother and my colleague, Governor Otto. He started all this. If you don't accommodate other tribes, we are also accommodating your tribes in Bauchi and other places. So that's the video that was trending uh, and I'm, I'm going to ask both gentlemen, his aide said that he was misquoted, but then the Mieti Allah has come out to throw their weights behind his previous statement. Is that not a way of confirming, because in, initially the Mieti Allah was saying it wasn't their men who were carrying arms, that they're very peaceful people, but then all, all of a sudden they're throwing their weights behind this. Is this not some form of confirmation that maybe the Mieti Allah allows for these herders to carry arms and ammunition and the, the issues that we're facing in the country, they probably have a hand in it. Could it be? Avian, I'll start with you. Clearly, the cattle rearers are carrying AK-47 rifles. It's been on for more than four or five years now. If you recall in the past, there were issues of cattle rustling, where certain individuals were coming in and stealing their cattle and they needed to defend themselves. How they got the rifles, I don't know. But then, all of a sudden, they started carrying rifles. And um, it has become like a standard thing now. But when you now add it with the fact that they're being harassed and so on, they're using that as an excuse for continuing to carry the uh, rifles. The same uh, police and Nigerian government that has gone into communities to disarm them has found it difficult to disarm the, the cattle areas, uh, just as you see in the picture you're holding. Now, when you um, talk about them being uh, sent out of one place or the other, I think some people just like to get this whole thing wrong. The average southerner that is anywhere in the north is living in a community, he's rented a house or bought land to build a house, and he's doing his business within the community is recognized by every, uh, everyone there. But when the cattle areas come into a community, they settle in the forest, and of late, they have started building their own communities to the extent of even installing their own traditional rulers. Mm -hmm. And so you find them there. Some of them, yes, may have been there for 40, 50 years. They speak your language, Yoruba, Igbo, whatever it is, or, or but they still speak Fufulde, which is their native language. Mm. Now they claim that they are not the ones who are doing uh, the you know causing the whole mayhem and so on. But the same people doing these things go back into the forest where they are, 
and they have not once reported them to the authorities. Mm -hmm. And if they sack a community, they are the ones who move into that community and benefit from the sacking of so there, 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 there is a dangerous game that is going on here. Uh -huh. And that's why you find some communities beginning to get very, very uncomfortable. Mr. So Lomba. if the governor says we we'll send our people away, we'll send your people away, um, he's not being honest with the reality of things, of what, what is going on. Hmm. Like I said, the, the Bene people in Bauchi are not living in the, in the bush, in the forest. They're not living in the bushes. Mm -hmm. They're living with them in the community, and they're not carrying arms and ammunition. They are actually providing services that... Um, I lived in Kano for a long time, and I'll tell you, when the period I was in Kano, vulcanizers, air conditioning repairs, uh, uh, you know, all kinds of artisans and all, were actually all from out of the state. Mm -hmm. So they were actually adding value to the community, and not a situation where... People are staying in the forest, and every once in a while, you are seeing all kinds of things. Even the farmland that the people are using to, to feed the country, hmm. you are going in there and um, abusing Destroying. and spoiling the farmland. Okay. Let me, let me come to you, Mr. Lomba. Um, same question I asked. Um, is this not a validation of sorts? And when we hear and see things like this, where does that leave the average Nigerian who's either been a victim of these um, um, cattle or these herders, or, I mean, for example, the people in Ogun State who have um, had their fair share of, you know, the crisis with these herders. Where does this leave those kind of people? The fact of the matter is that these guys, the Etiala, cattle breeders, whoever that has been carrying an AK-47, they have not pretended from day one what their mission is. That a governor comes and defends their position. Even the governor, too, has not pretended. It's not one governor, it's not two governors, a good number of them from northern Nigeria. And the fact is that if we don't want to confront this problem as we should, we will continue to grow as if we are blind in broad daylight. For instance, let me tell you, I speak in your language, but there is no radio station today sponsored by federal government for the your language to spread to whoever. Mind you, the jaws are in several states of Nigeria, including on those states, for instance, uh, those states, Delta, Akwaibom, Rivers, Baelsa, and all of that. Now, this federal government has found it convenient to provide a radio station for those who speak Fupude, Fulani, with federal government money. For goodness sake, what are we saying? And then you look at the way the appointments are made in all the security arms and what have you. If these guys are interested in getting whoever that has been perpetrating all of this evil, they could easily do it. So for I, goodness sake, not are you insinuating that the federal government is aiding and abating? Are you saying that the federal? Are you insinuating that the federal government Quote is me. Are, are, are you are you saying you that see, the federal see, government is encouraging we, we, what's we happening? It is clear. If for any reason they say that a group of people are terrorists, and then we see another group that even the international uh, organization, international bodies are called openly terrorist organization, but the federal government is refusing to do so. For goodness sake, what are we saying? You cannot tell me that if I drink water from a cup, the water will taste different if I drink from a bowl. This is what we are saying. And the reality is that we need to confront this federal government. We need to, you know, we should start pretending. You will see certain people, especially from southern Nigeria, the way they do it, divide and rule. You come to somebody, you promise him, okay, maybe 2023, you're going to get one thing or the other. For goodness sake, the whole southern Nigeria should come and speak with one voice. Let us have state police. You will see the difference. All this rubbish will stop. So, so, finally, your solution to this situation right now, I'm talking about in the interim. We're not talking about long, yeah. because we really don't have time to space it. But in the interim, what do you think would be the solution? How do we go about it? What strategies need to be put in place? For, for, for one, Southern Nigeria should take a position 
you see that Northern Nigeria, for the most part, they speak with one voice over started issues. Southern Nigeria must and speak with one thing for the immediate, like I'm okay. saying to you. By Monday morning, it is possible to have state police. It is not difficult. Those two things will make the difference. Okay. ABM, finally, um, how should the issue which um, has been in the news forever, you know, this issue of headers versus farmers, I mean, it's literally the only thing you see on the pages of newspapers today. How should it be dealt with by the federal government? What more can they do? Well, um, the, uh, Mr. President needs to address the nation so that instead of the spokesman saying one thing and counting themselves, we get to know where he stands as to the way forward. Um, there's been a release that shows that he, he seems to have a clear vision, but his voice would carry him better. And then for the whole southern and middle belt areas where we're having these problems, um, the state governments, the local government chairman should take a decision and arm their vigilantes. Uh, one of the problems we're having is that if you notice in the whole of the southern areas where most of the problems are, for some reason, the commissioners of police are from the northern area. So I would like the commissioners, um, the governors to come out and say out uh, the situation as it is. Are they getting the total cooperation of the commissioners. If not, they can insist on getting new commissioners of police. Okay. There has to be a situation where the people, not the individual, I'm not talking of individual household, but the vigilantes are armed adequately to counter this forces that are coming. All right. Well, um, former AVM Femi Badibu, uh, retired. Thank you very much for speaking with us. And Mr. Matins Lomba is a political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen. This has been a very interesting conversation. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, uh, we'll be talking about Body George, a former PDP and elder statesman, has urged President Muhammad Buhari to uh, save the nation from the brink. Of course, we know what we're talking about here. It's insecurity. We'll talk about it more when we come back from the break. Stay with us.